Hello, welcome to Fiber Trek. My name is Sarah. Welcome, you are most welcome. I'm so glad you decided to join me on another edition of the vlog. We are back up at the cabin in northern Maine. I have a lot to share with you. Knitting, quilting, canoeing, and an attempt at some wildlife photography, if you can bear with it. A heartfelt thank you to those that invest financially. It's deeply appreciated. I am looking forward to catching up with you. been on my mind sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light hey darling we could get out of town see the beautiful world around want to see it now pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday We were back at the cabin for a few days this summer, which is just a little bit north of where we live outside of Baxter State Park here in Maine. And everybody loves to be up here. I was able to grab some footage of this black-backed woodpecker and spend a little bit of time trying to capture this chipmunk because he was so darn cute. Rob and I did some paddling and practicing our eddy turns up the stream where you got to see some of the wildlife. Still not quite brave enough yet to take my big camera out in the boat with us, so the quality wasn't quite what I wanted. There is plenty of time for getting projects done. A majority of Rob's projects take place outside, and I brought with me the kitchen sink. So I had my needle felting, I brought some jewelry work, I brought my card weaving, I brought the sewing machine, and I pretty much paid most of my attention to the knitting. Now I did get out um, some quilting work. 
and I am starting on a scrap project as I described before. And this has to do with more foundation paper piecing. And this particular block is a string quilt block and I had mentioned that as well. And I needed to make a bunch of half square triangles. I really wasn't keen on how the string blocks were all coming together as string blocks. So I wanted to change it up and I had a bunch of plans. But to make this string block, again, one of the things I love about this is you can take awkward pieces of fabric and you can just stick it down and the seaming kind of takes care of the, all the squaring up. I use a little bit of glue here to stick the first piece on, which is face up. And then I'm using a quarter inch seam with the strips that attach to it. So I work from the middle out on each side and those strips don't have a dedicated measurement per se. So if you want big wide strips, you can use that. It just needs to, in the end, cover the paper. And you can measure that down, etc. So playing around with different scraps, I found really invigorating. I'm using that word a lot, but that's how I felt this summer. I've just felt really motivated and um, inspired. And so this quilt design is no exception. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in Golden, I'll call it home Golden, 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 golden things Playing around with all of these different skill sets has really led me to design my own quilt. I had projects that I had started and I had the scraps and I wanted to bring them together and create a finished item. I was lucky enough to have a bunch of this Edita Sitar Linen Texture Midnight left over and it's turned out to be the perfect neutral for me and my stash as a background. I mentioned I didn't like the overall look of the string squares as a block and so creating those into half square triangles kind of makes all of the fabrics pop and calms down the overall feeling of the block and the quilt. So we have foundation paper piecing and now this English paper pieced project which really had no end goal. I mean, I knew I wanted to use it kind of on a panel, but um, it's all coming together. This I was going to mount onto a center panel and create a border around it so that the string blocks would frame the panel. And I'm trying to decide if I want to do another round of the light fabrics and put it on a dark background with a border and then these owl foundation paper pieced vignettes or if I'm going to try to save myself some time and change the background of the panel which I did to this lighter version so I didn't have to do another round so I've gone to light background with the English paper piecing bordered by the neutral blue and that whole square will have um, those owls all the way around it and then it will be finished with the scrappy squares uh, the uh, string blocks so i just need to applique the panel and stay tuned for that <music>
wake Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy but things are finally right With you and I the future is bright Slow breakfast is a treat at the cabin. Cooked bacon, hot coffee, blueberry pancakes, and all of this leads up to daily adventures. We um, got to go out. We did the canoeing, as you saw, where we sighted uh, quite a bit of wildlife, and we did some chores. I am starting to learn to use a chainsaw and I have other skills that I want to perfect. And so Rob and I had to clear a tree off of a nearby trail along the shore. And we decided to take this as an opportunity to do some educating about the saw. Now, Rob is far more a master than I am. And if given the choice, I typically opt to not use motorized items. So I like to canoe, I can use a bow saw, I can use an ax. Chainsaws are a whole new bucket of worms. And so in this initial experience, uh, we talked about safety, we talked about the parts, and then Rob did some demonstrating and um, I'm going to continue to build skill. To end our day, and much to Ruby's joy, we finished our hike out to the Moose Meadow. She acts like she owns the place when she's out and about, and uh, this is a great place to swim and potentially catch some wildlife viewing. If you can't believe it, we have quite a bit of knitting to talk about. Well, knitting progress and this kind of reinvigoration of interest in projects and forthcoming projects. So it took me a long time to finish a sweater and primarily I am a sweater knitter. That's what I really enjoy working on and planning and um, pulling in yarns for substituting yarns and if you've been a longtime viewer of this podcast then you know that there is this concept of soulful stash um, which really relates to place-based yarns yarns that are minimally processed yarns that um, kind of speak to the landscape from whence they came and you're able to engage kind of in a natural historical way with particular yarns and wools. And that's what's really fun for me, uh, is looking at my stash or looking at producers and thinking about traveling there and what the sheep have been through, kind of the severity of the elements. And um, and this project I cast on and have worked on has kind of you know, pulled that forth from me again. I'm feeling that bit of exhilaration that goes into planning and thinking about my next project. So I'm feeling really 
uh, excited about wool and fiber and different projects uh, to get started on. Not that I didn't feel that this summer, but there was quite a bit of quilting. Um, and there's quite a bit of quilting, as you probably have already seen in the previous vignettes to talk about. So, or I have talked about. But um, for this portion, I am going to talk a little bit about where I've been, what I've been doing, what I've cast on. If you're a patron, you can look forward to a podcast where we kind of go through some of my stash. Where do I want to go next? A little dreaming, a little soulful stash um, revisitation, uh, kind of preparation for the fall. I am a bear at heart. I like to hibernate and be dormant. I like the feeling and the weight that winter brings, um, whether that's the physical weight of snow, um, insulation coming in. And so I have lots of anticipating, anticipatory energy around that. And I want to talk a little bit about my thoughts and plans uh, as I get excited for this next season. Of course, this next season does mean that I return to my routine of traveling for school and all of the pieces that go into that grounding work, that extra bit of work that I need to do to get grounded in each of the places I occupy, my home here in the north and my parents' home in the south. Um, and there are pros and cons, obviously, to that schedule. Most importantly, I get to see my family, my niece and nephew, um, being the biggest part of that draw for me. And then, of course, being at home in this beautiful space and place that I live um, on the lake. So lots to come, lots to think about. But let's talk about the projects and what's been happening with them. So if you watched my last episode, you'll know that I cast on the Moonlight Meadow sweater by Melody Hoffman. And I hammered this right out. I could not believe it. And I, I don't know, I felt like perhaps I had fallen into a knitting vortex, um, some sort of string theory dimensional experience because um, I have almost the la um, first sleeve finished and the whole body finished and cast off. Now, I did knit this on US 8, so let's not, you know, get overexcited about dimensional shifts. Um, and the cardin sweater was knit on a US 8 as well, but as friends pointed out, and I mentioned last time, that sweater was cabled. But I did anticipate that this sweater would kind of have the same bit of, I hate to use the word slog, but this kind of resistance um, to it, as if, you know, um, you know, I think about canoeing, I, I like to paddle, um, and like you're paddling, the wind's blowing, you're making, you're paddling, you're doing the work, but you're making progress, but um, you're not going with the current or with the wind, maybe. Um, does that sound a little better than slogging away? So the sweater wasn't like that. This was the tailwind and the current all together. Um, so I knit the third size uh, in this, and I, uh, as I mentioned last time, I am using a cone of Navajo churro, uh, main Navajo churro processed here in, I'm not sure if this went to Stonehenge or not. Um, anyway, I bought it years ago from One Lupin in Bangor, and so I'm using that, um, which I think is probably a DK weight. And I am using snow-capped yarns. Um, this is her, I think this might be um, Latouche in the Sedge, which is the blue face luster. I'm not sure she's still dying. And then I am using Tidal Yarns, and she is a natural dyer and procures her own fleeces from the New England area and has them spun up. And I'm using this kind of coppery cinnamon nutmeg color. Um, so for the texture bit, I'm using that sedge, that green, and then for the color work bit, I am using the sedge and the Tidal Yarns um, spice color. So here it is, and I'm almost finished with this sleeve. Um, I've knit the body according to the pattern. You, If you've been here with me a while, you'll know that I often um, renegotiate the sleeves. I like a bit more room in my upper arm and down into my cuff so I can get them over flannel shirts and other layers and I can also push them up. So I have done 
two of the five decreases I think that she recommends there may be six um, but basically and those all began lower and closer to my forearm but other than that everything else I've uh, knit pattern and my gauge is I think slightly smaller so while I think this was supposed to finish at a 40 Four, I might be finishing around 43 pre-blocked, but we'll see. Anyway, I'm happy. Um, I've tried it on, it fits, and I'm sure once I get it uh, wet blocked and have the fibers and the color work relax a little bit, it'll have a nice drape to it. So what will I cast on next for a sweater? I know you're all like, well, what about the fox sweater on those US threes and the Hillis Vogue Solia? Yeah, I know I'm looking at it. I am close to finishing that hem and casting off and then it's the sleeves and speaking of um, headwinds and big lakes and uh, slogging, uh, I feel that with the sleeves. I just have to get over the hump of casting, picking those up because I've re-engineered this and it's been translated from Norwegian and then figuring out, oh, uh, decreasing in pattern. but. You know what, since I don't really like to decrease, I might just knit the whole thing <laughs> in one set of stitch count and um, decrease very close to the end and have um, kind of a, a ballooned shape sleeve. <laughs> we'll see. It'll be a uh, design element um, and it's not. I'm not really known for that type of look, but anyway, I digress. So Moonlight Meadow. Melody Hoffman. Almost finished. I anticipate having this done this week. Um, well, this week. Time really has no meaning, right, when you're watching these. So I anticipate having this done before the next episode. And um, perhaps if you're a patron, you will see this finished in the bonus video that goes up over on that platform. So, wow, not only have I almost knit a whole sweater in the last two weeks, I also participated in Sophia Camaborn's puzzle, shawl, knit along, and I am just about done clue three. So, and she just released clue four. I've gone through two skeins of the Tamar from Blacker Yarns, which is primarily a long wool worsted spun um, yarn. And I don't have a tag with me. But um, yeah, I, um, Corinne of the Woolly Thistle brought this back from her first visit to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival for me. What a true friend um, hauling this. I, I shipped it to her mom's and then she hauled it back across the US, across the Atlantic to me. So it's had a long and so uh, history sitting in my stash, just waiting for the perfect project. And um, it was the first, I think, blacker that I purchased. Maybe not. I had been gifted some blacker when I discovered it. Um, friends um, brought it over to a knitting retreat I used to run. Uh, so again, blacker has had a long standing space in my stash, in my soulful stash, and in my heart. Um, and it was great to pull this out and revisit some of those memories from very long ago. Um, so anyway, I'm again happy with the way that this is working out the texture in different seed stitches, moss stitch, and I was a little concerned because it is a worsted D feeling yarn, so um, lots of drape, not a lot of cushion plushness per se, so I wasn't sure how that would show off the texture, but it's holding up really well, and um, I'm have, I have a nice gauge, um, and I think this will be... Um, super um, helpful to have this fall. Um, so anyway, uh, this is the Gannel color, I think, and I need to work on finishing clue three and starting clue four, and then I think it's just one more clue. So yeah, anyway, can you believe it? I know, a shawl and a sweater in two weeks. Well, that probably has me feeling a little bit smug about what to do next and what I, all the time and what's been happening with my knitting. I decided to cast on two things and reinvigorate a couple more. So one is I had been sent, um, as this a free download on Ravelry, the J.R. Tolkien mitts, which is his initials knit into a, uh, into, into mittens. And so I've cast those on um, and kind of been um, 
collaborating and thinking about it with my friend Nicole, the gentle knitter. Um, and we really wanted to have a big nerd experience with our knitting and Tolkien. And of course the upcoming Amazon release of the continuation of Middle Earth tales. And so, yeah, so nerding all around, I've cast those on and I am using uh, yarn from Jennifer of Wild Lily and who is now affiliated with um, High Country Wool and um, and doing some dyeing and, uh, and curating fleeces over there. Uh, so this is a previous um, yarn that she had produced. It's really beautiful. It's Western wool and um, so I'm, I am working on that. I had originally thought about um, hauling out some of my Uist stash um, and some Black Welsh Mountain and some um, Cheviot, but in the end I had worked with this yarn before in another pattern and I really wanted to knit with it. I just, I don't know, I was just getting getting the vibe um, and I wanted to connect with her and kind of our the spirit of our friendship and, um, and that wool from the western part of this country. So that I have cast on. There's really not that much to look that look at. I finished the cuff. With any luck, I'll have inserted some video for you here. Um, yeah, it's gray and cream. Don't get over excited about that. So, um, so using those two contrast colors. Now, the other thing I had talked about in my last episode was the Kairuna shawl, uh, which was gifted to me from Loretta, um, Donna Marie's daughter, and of Knit My Way Home podcast. And I've cast that on in Tidal Yarns and her fingering weight in some yarn I picked up uh, a couple years ago at, I think, New Hampshire Sheep and Wool, when I attended with my friend Sarah Lake of Upton Yarns. And so it's this color might be really hard to see, but wow, isn't that lovely when you are just working on um, garter stitch increases? You just you just do it. You don't have to reference anything, and um, and it just builds out this beautiful shape. Um, so I'm I'm really committed to finishing the puzzle, and um, but I'm really loving this color and. Uh, the rhythm of this knitting. So um, that's on the go and um, what had kind of happened is I had run out of yarn when we were at the lake uh, cabin and so I cast this on and immediately fell in love with everything about it. So we've got the Tolkien mitts and the Kairuna shawl and um, Cameron uh, has asked for a Duck Crofters Kep uh, similar to the colors that I did with the coppers and the aqua and the black. So I have that to cast on and I'm thinking about that. And I also revisited the J sweater, which I had knit a whole yoke and ripped out. And I wanted to see where I was. And wow, good job, Sarah. Like. Um, past Sarah to future Sarah. I had ripped it all out, recast it on on the correct needles, and um, had started the first set of increases. So I looked at that. I did a little bit of knitting on that. I'll talk more about that in the Patreon video. Um, so that was exciting to kind of get that pulled out. And it's done in this really beautiful peaty, deep brown and cream uh, contrast color. Um, and from yarn I picked up when I was in Norway three years ago? Oh, golly. So, um, so there's all of these kind of really beautiful, inspiring yarns hanging around and I'm just feeling all of it deeply and uh, looking forward to getting my hands back into that. And that being said, I had a bit of a snafu with my Lendrum. I went to sit and spin for Cameron's sweater that he wants from our Icelandic yarn and my tension knob um, snapped off and so I have to order one of those and luckily Rob was able to drill out the dowel from um, the insertion point. Um, so that's coming in the mail and I'm just feeling that spinning. So, so much to talk about with the yarns and I'm so pleased with the progress and feeling really um, invigorated, um, as I said, with the canoe metaphor nerd. Um, 
Right, I think that's it for the knitting. If you've been with me for a while, I'm so happy that you've stuck around till the end. Uh, and this gives me an opportunity to, again, thank you for taking some time to invest here. Uh, those that are patrons, thank you for your investment and financial contribution. Um, humbling and so much appreciated, uh, which allows me to have a bit of um, imagination and uh, funding to, I don't know, think about a drone? Thinking about that. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but yes, thank you so much for the insight and opportunity to connect. I wish you well wherever you are in the world and um, happy trails. I'll see you next time. Bye.